The year is 2022. The first few successful missions to Mars have just happened, and self-driving cars are becoming ever more popular. Pushing out manual drive cars in the next few years is completely feasible, and home automation is extremely popular. Sitting somewhere within the borders of the US is a person. A person planning something huge, something bigger than we have ever seen before. July 4th, 2022, is a security technician at the White House. He gets a message on his computer saying, Happy 4th of July. He dismisses the message and continues on with his work. Then that same message pops up again and again and again. So much that he can't even see his screen anymore. As the technician realizes that something has seriously gone wrong and that he probably has clicked on some malware of some sort so his computer has been infected, he tries to call his commanding officer. But when he does this, he finds out that he has no service, which is weird because he's in the center of Washington DC and there's usually pretty great service there. So what's going on? What the technician doesn't know is that the largest attack on the US has just happened, leaving the United States crippled, the most crippled it's ever been. But this was not a bomb or some huge army that set foot on US soil. Instead of all that, it was one person. And what that one person did, no one else has done. When the technician realizes what has happened, the damage is already done. All of the US defense systems are offline. As he steps outside, he sees on the road, most of the cars stopped in their place, not moving. Well, during that time, most cars are self-driving. They don't even have steering wheels or gas pedals. You just sit in the car and go where you want to go. The only cars that are moving are the manual drive cars. This is because all the self-drive cars are connected to the internet. Earlier that day, this one person somewhere in the US launched the largest DDoS attack in the history of mankind. But this person didn't target an individual website. They targeted very specific things and those things would shut down the US. First, they attacked the US government, taking down all their defense systems and internet capabilities. Then, they attacked all stoplights, causing chaos across the US. Then, they attacked airports, taking down all communication between planes, so the only way a plane could land is to manually talk to the other planes. The next thing they attacked was self-driving cars, causing all the cars on the road to stop right where they were. Then they attacked the power grid, causing all power to shut down in the US, and then they also attacked the 911 emergency response system. Then, to finish things off, they attacked the internet. But not just any normal place on the internet, no, the major backbones of the internet, strategic points that would take down the whole internet, not just for the US, but for the world. Whoever this was was taking us back to the Dark Ages. What this one person was able to do was the equivalent of a nuclear bomb on the internet. They destroyed everything, took everything down, and there was nothing we could do about it. We were left to watch as their defenses and power systems were taken down one by one by one person inside of our borders. You might be asking how something like this is even possible. Well, with home automation on the rise, that just adds more and more devices that can be hacked into. This allows the attacker to have some of the largest DDoS attacks in the history of mankind, allowing them to not just take down a website, but a whole country. Now, we're not in the year 2022, and it's not July 4th as of right now, but this is all too possible even today. Security technicians and other professional people theorized that the previous DDoS attacks that have been happening to large companies such as Dyn, which is a huge DNS company that takes care of crucial routing for websites like Twitter, Amazon, Netflix, Reddit, and many more, are just the beginning and are testing the waters to see what we can handle. It is possible to stop attacks like these, but we need to work together and we need to do it now because these attacks aren't going to stop and they're actually probably going to get more and more as more 
light switches become automated. An attack like this would be crippling to any country and is possible today, not in the future, but today. Luckily, there are a lot of big companies that would prefer that those things do not happen. So for now, that story is fiction, and hopefully it will stay that way. I'm Efrem signing off. I'll see you next time. Bye.